first question is from Tody Crudeau. Do any of you integrate different proteins such as whey, casein, plant-based for different purposes throughout the day or week? Is casein before bed just bro science or are there legitimate benefits to utilizing various proteins differently? Uh, who picked this one? I did. Oh, we, haven't, we haven't crapped all over this in a while. Yeah, I know. So this, so this is a uh, context matters question. If your protein intake is low, then the type of protein you eat um, does matter quite a bit. So if you have low protein intake or below what would be considered ideal for performance and building muscle, which studies show is about 0.6 grams per pound of body weight all the way up to about a gram per pound of body weight. If it's below that, then you're going to want to have a protein source that is high in branched-chain amino acids. Whey protein is really good. Animal sources are superior to plant sources. And studies will show that those sources build more muscle, contribute better to performance and recovery and all that stuff. If your protein is high, if you're eating a high-protein diet, 0.6 to 1 gram per pound of body weight, really doesn't make that big of a difference. In fact, it almost doesn't matter at all because when you're eating that much protein, you're getting a lot of amino acids, and it doesn't really make uh, a difference. Now, you might be wondering why supplement companies will tell you to eat this protein at night, this one during the day, or whatever. Because if you're a successful protein company and you're selling a lot of whey protein, you want to sell another type yeah, of protein. you got to figure it out. Yeah. How can you sell another protein without getting them to stop taking the one that they already take? Hmm. Well, you tell them that the one that they buy and so take is great digestive. for- Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That one's good for post-workout. This one's good for nighttime. Mm -hmm. This one's good for you know travel. This one's good for whatever. So you hear a lot of that, but this is really splitting hairs. And if your protein intake is high- really doesn't make a difference. Now, that addresses the whey and the casing. But what I will uh, – and I don't do this like on uh, – like I'm not scheduled about it, right? But I'm just aware of it, right? So I, I do rotate, and we I think we all do this, uh, rotate our foods mm -hmm. and where the sources of protein. So like I'm not always going to get it from uh, chicken thighs. Uh, if I found that I had a week where I had a lot of chicken thighs and I didn't have any fish, the next week I'm trying to make sure that I implement more fish into my diet. Right. If I'm uh, never getting it from beans, yeah. I'm trying to get it from beans every once in a while. Like I try to just rotate my foods all the time. So I'm also picking up all the other micronutrients that you're getting from different mm -hmm. types of foods. So I do think there's a tremendous amount of value. I think any articles that try and sell you on why this type of a protein, whether it be from food or a protein shake, is better than the other is splitting hairs so long as you're hitting your intake, right? So if you are hitting the number of grams that you should be hitting for your body to build muscle, the maximum amount, which is somewhere between 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of body weight, if you're hitting that, where it's coming from is not really going to make a difference on how you change the look of your body your body composition. Yeah. But I think for health purposes, I think it's ideal to, to chase that protein number through whole foods and to rotate those whole foods as much as possible. Yeah, that makes that's the exact that's the best advice um, that I would say. And look, they've done studies. They've done studies where they compare plant proteins to animal proteins, and when protein intakes are lower than what we just said, the optimal amount, animal proteins uh, are superior. They mm -hmm. just are. They kick the crap out of plant proteins. But then when they take a lot of protein, doesn't matter. It's equal in terms of the results. Now, here's the deal. Uh, there's a huge individual variance between people in terms of which protein sources feel the best. Right. And for me, uh, <laughs> I stick with the protein sources I digest the best. So whey mm -hmm. is a great source of protein. I don't digest whey at all, yeah. so I never have it, right? But there's also beef protein, right? Yes. So th this is something else, too, that like I, uh, I always forget about that, and then egg protein. And so mm -hmm. there's other various sources. But yeah, that's one of the big considerations is really how that's affecting your digestive system, what uh, you know you can process uh, the, the best, what, what resonates the best with you. Uh, that's something that I would lean towards. And sometimes that changes, too. Like even if I'm inundated with dairy, I might even feel it a bit to where I'll probably like try some plant protein uh, and, and rotate it, uh, kind of like what Adam's saying, too. But it's just important to kind of move things around so you don't get too inundated with yeah. one source. Yeah, beef for me is the easiest to digest. If I eat a lot of beef, I just my gut feels good, uh, my body feels good as a result. That's my favorite source of protein. Second would be chicken. Third would be fish. Uh, lamb is up there too. Other sources of protein can bother me. Plant protein's okay, but if I push that too hard, that can start to bother me. Dairy, I can't eat either. Um, so think about that for yourself. Like what makes you feel the best? and then hit your protein targets based off of that.